I wasn't with prison on my worst enemy. I did 10 years in that joint, bro. At 16 years old, bro, I had, to, I had to grow up fast. I don't care how much a man I thought I was. When I got in there, I realized, oh, this is a big boy game. They don't care. I watched dude 15 years old get raped by grown men. Ain't no, it is what I was in a cell with my homie. He got set on fire. I went to sell my other homie. We, he wasn't my homie. Him and the dude was beefing. He couldn't get some. He took all the out the toilet, threw it in the cell. I'm like, bro, get, man, get me out of here. So when Booster said he saw some shit and he called his mom and said, Mom, get me out of here, I understood it. Because at some point, you just be like, bro, this shit too much. This shit too much. I don't pull, this ain't how human beings supposed to act, bro. This ain't right, bro. I got cut right here. I got cut in my back, bro. I done seen dudes hang themselves. Bro, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. On top of that, you be way in a country somewhere and then white folks, you really get to see white folks. You think you deal with racism with police? Go in one of them small country towns where the, the prison is ducked off. Them white folks gonna show you, oh, this is what we talking about right here. This the good old boys right here, bro. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you're suffering from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. You know, it's funny. Um, talking about impact, uh, like I had my um, my media kit done or my one page done. Mm -hmm. And I made sure my man put the uh, like so, uh, cultural impact. Because mm -hmm. like even outside of like people doing on the internet, I feel like cultural impact is a lot of things. Pe it's something that people look over look in general mm -hmm. within yourself even like sponsors when it come to like trying to give you money mm -hmm. they want to look at the impressions or the views mm -hmm. but they skip the cultural impact that you might have on mm -hmm. on, on on just your your industry mm -hmm. and i made them put that specifically for that reason because it's something that i feel like a lot of people don't think about you, you're looking at your <laughs> value yeah i mean I, you know your value mm -hmm. and, and i think everybody they don't they don't dig in deep enough to understand what's their value mm -hmm. Right, it's stuff I've turned down. I'll be honest with you. Amazon offered me six figures to do a book that they could keep once I write it. My value wasn't in that. Yeah. I was like, nah, I'm good. They was like, what well, you, you know, we going I'm like, why would I, why would I write it and give it to you? And they were like, well, you can write another one. I'm right. like, nah, that's my value. You know what I'm saying? My value is why would I let you get something that I've put together and you, you can benefit off it in perpetuity. Mm. Right, so you you give it to me for six figures, but you gonna go make millions off it because you can produce it that you want. You can do so many other things with it. Understanding my value is nah, right? And so it depends on where you at on your journey mm. because you got to be able to solidify your value. And when you know your value and it's solidified, you can stand in it and not nice. be budged. And it it don't because the value actually is not. A dollar amount, it's the perceived impact, mm. right? So when you come in and your people who listen to you every week, you now have an obligation to give them a certain amount of value. Mm. You obligated to that. Your consistency has now left an imprint on their life, and we taking that for granted. When we think about the world leaders that came before us, bro, like think about if Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, think about if they had the audience that we have now. Bro, I have 1.3 million followers on Instagram. I got another 100,000 on TikTok. I got another 400,000 on YouTube that tune in every day. Not all of them, but that's just one. All, just imagine if them type of, that's value. Right. That's cultural <laughs> value and influence. Let me ask you this, though. I guess, like, when it comes, because a lot of things, a lot of times we overlook the power collaboration, too. Mm-hmm. Can't, uh... That Amazon play, yep. let's say, depending on if it's, because sometimes, like, you can make six figures in yep. two weeks when, when you're talking about the stock mm -hmm. market, right? Especially with, with the um, mm -hmm. experience that you have.
But if it's the right six figures, I say high six figures, hypothetically, mm -hmm. right? If it's high six figures, can't they put you in a position where more people want to hear from you and the second book do even better, even if you do so it independently? It's all in the power negotiation. Mm -hmm. The negotiations they had with me surrounding that wasn't what I was willing to deal with. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I, I should have just gave you more context to just the content. Okay. Um, the, I'm a thinking man, so yeah, I'm thinking nah, like- So the negotiations <clears throat> behind it, we had some different negotiations behind it because I'm always about leverage, mm -hmm. right? So f for instance, um, uh, I went on tour with Eric Thomas, mm -hmm. right? And he wanted to pay me and I said, I would never let you pay me because I know what this does to my brand. I should be paying you. You know what I'm saying? So I went on a five or six thing tour with ET. One day I filed, I closed for him. One day I opened for him. And then three of the days, once he realized like, oh, trap talking, we was going bar for bar. Like he'll go, I'll go, he'll go, I'll go, he'll go, I will go. I know what that did for my brand. Mm -hmm. You can't pay me for that, E. So it's, it's understanding how is the deal positioned and then how can we negotiate? Now, if you stay, they were steadfast on what they wanted. Yeah. So it was like, I'll yeah. revisit it. Bro, talking to people that's successful like yourself, it'd be confirmation. Cause it's like, yeah. it ain't nothing that I ain't think of, right? Yeah. Like even with the E thing, I'll be telling my friends, like, or not friends, I, like I'll offer my services to people mm -hmm. that I that I know can like benefit me yeah. for the free. Like I just, that's where I add, that's why I built my relationship, right? Yeah. I always add value to somebody for sure. Everybody be like, man, you tripping. Like nah. you doing it for free. Yeah. It ain't really for free, right? Because it's like, bro, I know, I know what how I can benefit off yeah. of, right? Yeah, and it's not even just the benefit; it's just, yeah. it's just that's how you, in my perspective, that's how you gain real relationships now. Like it's about because every everybody you go in the room is, what can you do for me? Yeah. Nah, let me show you what I can do for you, yeah. and I don't need no nothing from you. Yeah. And then people, you trustworthy, you build yeah. rapport, things like that. So like, man, that definitely be confirmation. Well, you, you also <clears> got to realize that um, a lot of people are monetarily motivated mm. right so when people are monetarily motivated you getting people and social media has cultivated that mm. where if it's if it's not monetarily motivated then they ain't doing it mm. so you have you like fans you got females that be like yo i ain't messing with no dude that don't got no money mm -hmm. right i ain't mad at you for that you know what i'm saying i ain't tripping on that but what happens when you meet a man that may not have the money yet, but he got the vision, the dedication, the determination, the consistency, and the commitment. Mm. It's going to come, right? So when you deal with relationships, and I'm just talking about, I never go in a relationship talking about, like, and I'm not talking about women, I'm just talking about when I'm meeting people about what I could do for you. I don't go into that. I go in there and I measure what we doing and then how can I bring value because what I could do in the moment may not be what you need. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So I go in, a, I go in a, like, I, prime example, one of my closest business people that I really be on right now is my guy Chad from 85 South. Mm. Quietly, he's a genius, bro. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. And he don't get props, but he don't want them. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But when you look at the 85 South brand, bro, he is the, and I'm not taking that because <laughs> I, I like Fly's my guy, Chico being my guy, Carlos my guy. That, I rock with them. No, nah, but you talking to But Chad is such a, Genius. Mm -hmm. And so literally last night, Chad called me. He was like, Trap, what up? I'm like, what's up? He like, man, pull up on the studio. Mm. I'm like, I bet. Because we talk about a lot. I go to the studio. I was in the hour. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you so much. I was in, I remember the last yeah, spot that they had. Right? And so before I got my spot, I remember I was trying to set my studio stuff up in like a corner of their stuff. And Chad was like, Trap, that ain't going to fit. Go get your studio. I was like, damn, I don't really want to do that. He was like, I'm telling you. So I go to the new spot they got, and I, immediately when I saw it, bro, my eyes lit up like I saw the baddest woman I ever wanted in my it's life, so dog. Fine, right? So when I saw the studio, I was like, damn. It's fine. So I'm looking at it, and he's just walking me through it. He like, all right, we got this stage. We got this stage. We got this. He was like, this the admin part. Boom, boom, boom. So he walked me through the whole thing, and I'm like, and immediately he started telling me, this is what I could have did better right here. I should have did this. This came later. But you know what, Trap? I've already outgrown this. I say, how you outgrown? You just got here. He said, because I'm building where I'm going, not where I'm at. Come on, man. And I was like, damn. 
I went there 11 o'clock. We ain't leave at 2.45. Me, him, Fly, and Ryan, we just was talking. Now, watch this. The value I give to them just now, while we was talking, it wasn't even about stocks. I was like, Chad. So he, I'm like, yo, you got to get SOPs, Chad. He was like, what the hell that is? Him and Fly, like, what the f what that is? Chad, what that stand for? I'm like, I'm, I, I say, that's standard operating procedure. I say, this is what you need. I say, the dudes on the camera, they need to know what they're doing post-production and pre-production. The dude on the sound, they need to know what they're doing post-production and pre-production. I said, the people that's doing the editing, they need to know what they're doing post-production, pre-production. And you need, to have the, you need to have a list of all that. He was like, why? I said, because if you got to fire one of them, instead of somebody having to teach them, you could just give them this thing. Here's what you got to do. I said, let me make it even more sense to you. So Fly, I said, now make that shit make a little more sense to me, Trap. I said, all right, check this out. You get on the airplane. Does the plane just take off? It was like, nah. I'm like, what the do them being that bitch, hitting stuff click, click 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 I said that's SOPs it's a procedure they gotta go through before that motherfucker take off I say but then the women that come up and tell you hey welcome to Delta this is this this is this put this on put that on that's a procedure the plane go in the air when the plane come down you don't just get off that motherfucker they gotta click 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 <laughs> check it on the base they got I say you know why that's a procedure that lets us know we had a great takeoff and a great landing if you follow that, and Chad was like, I got to do that. Mm -hmm. I said, now even further, Chad, this out. all you got to do is you can record it, get the people who doing it, get them recorded, and then get the transcribed. It's already done for you. Put the shit in folders. You get that to the production team. You get that to the editing team. You get that to your admin. You get it to your secretary. Everybody need to have that shit. Immense value to my shit who was like, what the fuck is that? Mm -hmm. You feel me? So you you come in and you like, all right, even if not, bro, just hire somebody that come in that can do the systems for you that's going to take you off your plate. That way you ain't trying to think about everything motherfuckers are supposed to be doing. Mm. So every relationship might not be predicated on the one thing you think you do. So you might be like, all right, trap talk, stock trap. Nah, I may have a business conversation that may take that help you. So I never go in a situation saying, I'm going to do this. I always go in a relationship saying, what part of me is needed in this relationship? Come on, man. Let's get this started. I feel like we ain't even start the damn interview, man. Yo, what's poppin'? You know what time it is, your boy, Mr. J. Hill. J. Hill Podcast, special edition today uh, with a special person. I mean, this guy is like literally like a legend uh -huh. and, and not even just in his field, but just Gener in general, right? Like, we come from uh, small cities in New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, he comes from New Orleans. And, I mean, he just cultivated a, a situation out of nothing, right? Like, this guy, he's been uh, shot. He shot people and booked. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Like, and still, he's, uh, what they say? Out of a concrete, a rose grew, right? Rose grew to concrete. Um, this guy uh, is just, like, and I've been trying to get this interview for a long time, True. but, you know, I'm not even upset. I don't even get upset no more because what happens is it just, it only gets better. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is his platform only is going to grow. My platform only going to mm -hmm. grow. So if I get it 10 years later, then mm -hmm. look at that. You get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? The multitude of the interview then compared to what it would have been mm -hmm. when I first asked. So I don't even trip about them things now. It's just come with the growth. But this guy is, um man, nothing short and special. Y'all know I'm, I suck at uh, intros, but I really mean this. Mm -hmm. Just watching this guy, I mean, to be able to come from nothing, to look like us, and to paint, to have something on his chest painted, Wall yes, Street sir. look like us, right? It yes, looks sir. like us now. Yes, sir. Right? And I, I've never really, I, I really don't know too much about stocks. I mean, not much at all to keep it 100 with you. Um, but he's teaching it. He got into the content space. He got a show, a three-hour show every Tuesday. We yeah. want to talk about that. I mean, uh he really don't need no introduction. <laughs> but Wall Street, Wall Street Trappers in the building. What up, dog? What's good, Appreciate King? you How for you pulling feeling, up. brother? I appreciate you. I feel hey, man, great, you, man. You do, I, I appreciate the uh, the consistent commitment mm. to getting me here. Mm. Um, I think you said that right. It wasn't what I I wasn't like ducking the interview. Yeah. We just moving and we building. And I think we just kept the communication like, hey, bro, I got you, bro. And mm -hmm. I was like, I give you my word. I'm coming. I'm coming. And every now and then you would just be like, hey, what we looking like? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that's 100 percent a testament to who you are as a man as, as you growing. Mm. Cause you could have easily been like, man, I ain't worrying about that dude. He ducking me. And it's not the case. And I think sometimes we get impatient for no reason, forgetting the fact that we all are growing, we all are building. Mm. And so sometimes 
when you want it may not be the right time, but when it comes, it's the perfect time. Perfect time. Every yeah, yeah. Time. So I'm I'm glad to be here. I'm, I'm excited and I'm proud of what you've been building, man. I sure. appreciate that, bro. Um, let's stay on consistency for a second, man. Yeah. I think you said you've been doing this consistently since like 2014. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, <clears throat> uh, that's when I started taking it serious. Right. Um, of course, you know, I did 10 years in prison for attempt murder, and I got introduced to the concept while I was in prison. Mm. Um, I got home, I got found not guilty on another charge and I came home about 2012. Mm -hmm. Another charge got overturned in 2014. And I was just like, I right, like some things gotta change. Um, I'm, I'm real close to being a, a, a statistic. Mm. Um, and so the thing that came to my mind was, you playing the wrong game. And that's what the guy told me when I was in prison. He's like, bro, y'all just playing the wrong game. And that stuck in my head. Um, and then so I started taking this like really serious. Um, I had studied a lot while I was in prison. Um, consistency is doing this, doing the thing con continuously until you get great at it, mm -hmm. right? Uh, people can fluff that word out a lot, mm -hmm. but I kept doing it until, it, you can't deny when something has been working. So if we look at the playbook of America, that's my, that's the game I play. I'm, my goal is to master the wealth game in America. Mm. I'm not looking for the game to be fair. America ain't never been fair, right? They stole this land. This land ain't for them, but yet we had Columbus Day. The game, I mean, nothing about America fair, but if you understand the rules of the game, you can navigate the game. So I heard they said, I heard somebody say one day, fair is only for uh, Ferris wheels and um, the what's the name cookies, the uh, deep fried. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's the only thing fair yeah, is for. I mean, America ain't fair, and there were too many people beating each chest about this ain't fair and that ain't fair. But the wealth game is for the people who understand the rules of the game. Mm. And so when I looked at the wealth game, I looked at okay, the 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 majority of people who are wealthy in America, at least sixty percent of their wealth are in stocks. Mm. Why would I do anything else? No, now, don't get me sense. wrong. I don't have nothing against real estate. My my triangle offense is stocks, real estate, business, mm -hmm. right? But for me, you just understand it. Like stocks is where I need to be at. Let me master that game. It's the easiest way to print money. It's the easiest way to print money in America. Why why not play it? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to talk to you about just the consistency. I feel like when we on this road to like trying to be successful, mm -hmm. it, it, it got to be some sense of like insanity. Right, mm -hmm. and like you said, it like consistency is keep doing something until you get great. Yeah, but some what they say about insanity is doing, doing the, the same, same thing, thing expect, mm -hmm. expecting a different result. But sometimes yep. in this role, we we doing the same thing and we don't mm -hmm. get a different result until a breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Right, but we never. But it's insane about it because it's like you thinking you know you're going to get a breakthrough. You know you're going to get mm -hmm. the breakthrough, and no, even though nobody else see your vision, but you know, mm -hmm. right? So that's why I say it's like it. it, it part of it is ins insane. Well, <clears throat> you, you got to be willing to make tweaks on a journey. Mm. So if you, you, you're on the road to greatness. Mm -hmm. So even for you with this show, I can guarantee you if I went to your first show and I come to now, mm -hmm. you've made a lot of tweaks, but you still shooting the same show. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? It's the same show. Yeah. But what happens is you get a better camera. You get a couple people, you get another guy on a switchboard, you add a little light here, your flow start to change, your delivery get a little better, you learn a couple more words. Mm -hmm. Every interview, you get a little more confidence. So now you can say things a little different. You learn how to gauge the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. He say this, this, you start setting them up for questions. So you're still doing the same thing though, but you're evolving and you're tweaking the process and the philosophy as you go forward. Mm. So you're not necessarily doing the same thing, but you're still in the same format. Mm, but you're fact. consistent. No, that's a fact. Yo, talk to me about, because <clears throat> I feel like we're in a microwave era, right? 100%. And I, I, I say this a million times. We talk about Instagram, IG being Instagram. I talk about IG being like instant gratification, right? That's what the app damn near stands for, because you can see success and it's like, I want that mm -hmm. now. But I feel like it's been a lot of science in the people who's been doing it for a minute or like mm -hmm. just grinding. I, I was curious. I wanted to pick your brain on that because I feel like nowadays it's like, it's all about how fast you got it. Man, I only been doing this for six months, man. Right. We lit. So, yeah, cool. Salute to you. But where the nigga that been doing it for 10 years and still grinding? Yeah. And it's like with you, like, of course we see the success, but even mm -hmm. you in your mind is like, man, I'm still ain't where I want to be. 
it's because I got bigger goals. So one thing I will say is there's a lot. Don't get me wrong. I, I will not glorify the streets. Mm -hmm. But it put a different moral code inside of me. The era in which I grew up in the streets. Nothing against the young dudes now. But there's an era in which I grew up with and it put certain things in me. My OGs kind of put certain things in me that as a 41-year-old man, they still hit home. That's my bread basket. So if I look at what I'm doing right now, I'm like, all right, cool. But if I look at the people I admire, right, they ain't quit just when they made a million dollars. They ain't quit just when no, Martin Luther King ain't quit when he won the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Nelson Mandela ain't just quit when he got out of prison. You know what I'm saying? Or Malcolm X ain't quit when he just got into the Nation of Islam. He kept learning. He kept evolving. So the the goals that I have are huge. So when I look at my goals, I'm looking at where I'm at now. And I'm talking to, talking to you about Chad from 85 South. Like, that's my dog. When I look at him, he was like, bro, we building a media conglomerate. Mm. So it ain't. So I'm like, oh, that's what I'm on. So if I look at what I'm doing now, I'm, I'm good, but that ain't legacy. I'm in legacy mode, mm. right? So how do I how do I be here for 20 years? So when I look at Dave Ramsey, dude been here for 20 some years, bet. When I look at Tony Robbins, dude been here for 20 years, bet, right? So when I look at the people who been here for 20 plus years, I'm like, all right, that's my window. Mm. They 60 years old still doing it. I'm 41. I'm like, all right, I got 20 years. So I look at somebody who may be 21, 22, and they're like, yo, I've been doing this for six months. I'm saluting you, but I'm asking also, are you enjoying it? But where are you going to be at when you're 40? Mm. Right? What happens when Instagram ain't Instagram no more? You got to pivot. Can you pivot? Mm. Right? So I'm always putting myself in position to pivot, plan, pivot. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my whole game plan, <laughs> bro. So. Yo, but nah, it's crazy because like you just every time you you just, you speaking gems is give me like ideas just shooting out of my brain. <laughs> he was like to the twenty one year old, right? Yep. They've been doing, doing that. They've been doing that thing for six months and it's yep. cool. But yep. I'm like, man, where you gonna be at when you are forty? Mm -hmm. Remind me of like when Drake first came in the game. He like, now nah, we gonna see who 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 who's still here ten years from now. You feel me? But you getting so much money, right? And and coming from where you come from, I feel like sometimes you can get high. And you can for I don't want to say forget, but you get so far removed where you come from that like you don't remember, right? I say that to say, I was thinking about this uh, Drake uh, lyric the other day, and it's like <clears throat> when you don't have no money, it's always easy to be like, man, I don't mean nothing. Mm -hmm. But Drake said it the best. He was like, "Kiss roll, glass full. I prefer the better things. Mm -hmm. Niggas with no money act like money isn't everything." everything. Yep. What you think about that? Um, I think money has its place. Um. Again, we're in America, right? Um, Did I I'm, get the lyrics right? Mm-hmm. Oh, all right, all right. I'm just making sure. So, first of all, I'll, I'll say this, bro. You know, like, I believe in God, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm, I believe in God, and I live in America, and I'm a black man, right? So, one is I know there's a higher power. Two, I know that America, money is the golden calf, mm. right? And I'm a black man. So, what does that mean? All right. So I believe in God, so God tell me you don't put nothing before him. But I live in America where money is worship. Mm. I'm a black man, so I already grew up without money. I already grew up impoverished. I already grew up behind the eight ball. I already see everything around me is impoverished. I know what lack of money look like. So for me, it's always saying, I'm not going to let this money be my God. I'm going to always go to the source, but I will acknowledge that I do need money to exist here. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? I'm not going to disregard that. So for me, I do a lot of stuff. So I love giving back. Like you'll nothing, and we talked about this. Like I'll, you'll never see me flaunting money, but you'll see me talking about assets I'm acquiring. Mm. It's two different concepts. If I show you a lot of money, then you getting caught up in the idea of the illusion of what money represents. But if I show you I got a million dollars in stocks. Now you understanding of what the power of what that money can do. Hmm. Right? So when we look at America, America has uh, 319 million people in America. Right? But then you have 732 billionaires and you have 22 million millionaires. Listen hmm. to that number. So that means in essence, 
<clears throat> you really have one percent of Americans, two percent of Americans that's really living the so-called American dream. So you still got another two, maybe twenty, maybe nineteen something million people that's either living check to check or barely getting by. Mm. My numbers may be off a little bit, but those are the people who worship money. The wealthy people understand the money, so their goal now is to accumulate as much of it as they can so they can buy more assets because they understand that's what a longevity at. Mm. So you have a group of people that's glorifying money and it ain't nothing wrong with it because nobody never taught them nothing different. You're only going to act out in this world based on what you know. And so everything that our culture gets glorifies getting money. Mm. All right? But then when you look at other cultures, and I'm not even going to say other cultures, when you look at specific groups or pockets in cultures, you see the difference. Mm. And so for me, I just want to study the people in the in the pockets that's doing something different. Do you think that the people who is living check to check, do you think that they're going to find money or they just never had it? So they think that's their problem. So the it, ain't, the it ain't that they glory. It's not. So it's kind of like. America is so amazing at what it does, right? You got to understand the machine of America. So America, so you ask yourself, why don't America teach us about money in school? All right, why, why would, would I they? teach you about money? Yeah. Then you going to be me. Yeah. And if you me, you have a good chance of knocking me and mine off. It's like the analogy you made uh, it was a couple yep. years ago about the lion. The lion and, and the, the zebra. zebra. Yeah. Yep. So the lion <laughs> would never tell the zebra how to get away because then I'm, I'm, putting my prey in a position to starve me. Mm -hmm. And so it's not that people glorify money. Some people, what happens is because, example, if I'm in a desert and I need water mm -hmm. and you got the water, you are now the person that has the power, right? And if you give me that water, yo, I'm going to praise that water. And you probably do next near anything to get the water. You feel me? And when I get it, immediately, if there's people behind me, I'm going to feel like I'm better than them. Because mm. I got water. Y'all don't. And so there has to be somebody that disrupt that vision and say, nah, yo, let's find a way to equally distribute this water. And so now the water is no longer the thing that we are glorifying but we now saying that it's the restoration that the water gives us to be on a journey a little bit further. Mm, mm, mm. You feel what I'm saying? And so for me, it's like, I'm not mad at the young boy who glorifying money because he getting money for the first time in his life. He probably been broke. He saw his mama be broke. His mama probably got beat. His daddy probably in prison. His daddy probably got killed. Yo, that's his way of feeling empowered. But somebody got to come teach him something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And that take time because when I was 21, bro, don't tell me nothing. I'm in here for a body, dog. You know, I attempt murder, bro. I'm glorifying that until I got until I learned something a little bit different. Mm. And so we all got to go through those phases in life. But who are the people that's teaching us? And America's done a great job at teaching us to look at certain things a certain way. America has taught me and you how not to even like each other without even knowing each other. So I, I'll go up the street and be like, what's up, King? Because I want to break that dish, I want to break that out the gate. I want us to know we're on the same team, bro. No, you was, it's funny because you was talking to uh, 19 Keys about that. Something. My brother. Yeah, not yeah. too long ago. It's basically about like how we're taught, it's kind of like we're unconsciously taught to to hate on one another. Kinda. We are. <clears throat> we and, are. It, my thing is, bro, I ain't going to lie to you. I feel like sometimes I, I think I'm an empath because Everything you saying, I just, it's good and it's dope. Mm -hmm. But it's like, we know that, I, I don't know if the world could ever get to a place. It will never. Yeah. It will never. And and, and, and when we talk about learning new mm -hmm. things, it's like, man, I was so fortunate to come to Atlanta and like just learn some new things about finances, meet Hell different yeah. people. You know what I'm saying? It was, it was a blessing, but like, I, I be lying and sometimes I don't think like, damn, man, I wish my whole, I wish the whole Baltimore can be here and mm -hmm. understand this. I love when I was in Baltimore, man. I love Baltimore. <clears throat> Baltimore reminds me of New Orleans so much. Yeah, bro. for sure. Yeah. Ryan Mills, Baltimore. So much, bro. I love that. I love it, bro. Yeah. I don't lie. You know, Boosie's like um, our God, Godfather. Man, I rock with, <laughs> I rock with B Mo. So when I did my six, my when I told you I did the eight city tour before mm -hmm. I did the yeah, paid tour, yeah. B Mo was one of the cities I went to. I rock with B Mo. 
what happens is there will never there will never be a time where we all come together. That's too much like right. That's the reason why all our great leaders got killed. Mm. There's watch this. There's so much money to be made in chaos. Mm -hmm. Right. There's so much money to be made in chaos. There's not enough. Mo the money that can be made in unification makes one group of ethnic group of people more powerful. We can't have everybody sticking together. They don't want that. Right. I love Atlanta because I feel like Atlanta gave me coming from New Orleans, just like Baltimore. Um, you don't see success too much. So when I came to Atlanta, I was like, whoa, they don't even know what they got here. <laughs> they don't even know, this the promised land. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, wait, hold up. So I love Atlanta. I would never talk bad about Atlanta. But I do feel like, again, when you get, you got to be open to getting new information. And you got to be open to the idea that the information can change my life. But how are we? And that's my thing. That's why I say sometimes I feel like an empath. Because before I got to Atlanta, mm -hmm. I'm thinking I'm doing my job to learn. Yeah. Right? I don't know. Perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you talk about Chad, Chad right? Yeah. I never talk, talk, talk to this man. I, really, something? Go ahead, go ahead. I could tell a light bulb went off <laughs> in his head. <laughs> Perfect I saw example. It. I like, saw it go off in his head. Bro, no, 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 yeah, because like, <laughs> and I always say this. I, I think I asked uh, DC and T out this. I'm like, yo, how, how, like, people gotta want to know. But how do mm. you want to know something that you just don't know? And what? Am I perfect example, right? I never met Chad. I heard a lot of good things about him. I know the position he plays. So I, when you say his name, yeah. I'm like, yeah, niggas don't know because I didn't know at once, right? right? But that's not even my point. My point is, I never thought about getting a podcast studio mm -hmm. until I met David Shannon and, yeah. and I saw his. It wasn't that I didn't see. It, it wasn't that I didn't know that I can get mm -hmm. one. I just never saw. saw I, it. My thing was I want to be the biggest podcaster, right? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't even know what that mean. I never forget. I went to David's chair spot, and I'm like, "This is dope." <sighs> oh no, I need one of these yeah. because I saw it. Yeah. So if you in a city like Baltimore, New Orleans, mm -hmm. and you don't see it, 100%. it's easy for us to be like, "Man, we gotta want to know. You gotta get new information." But it's like we don't even know where to start to get the information mm -hmm. that we need, let alone that we want. You get what I'm saying? Environment <laughs> and exposure is so much of a key, right? So even right now, I got 6,000 square feet. But when I saw what Chad got, I was like, yep, I'm going bigger. Mm -hmm. But I already knew I was going bigger, but I had not I had no idea what it looked like. Mm. And then when Chad told me, I about grew this already, I'm like, bro, you, didn't even, you just got in here. And then he told me, I'm building for where I'm going, not where I'm at. I was like, bro, what? It was an epiphany for mm -hmm. me. Well, what happens is, the one thing I can say about, the great thing about social media is, it does give you a window to where you can be. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's you feel true. me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, for me, I'm not an excuse maker. But I do understand reality. So I do feel like social media does give us a window to, one, the possibilities, and two, we can have a window of where we want to go at. You're right. You know what I'm saying? You, I was watching one of your episodes, right? Thank and, you for watching, bro. Yeah, no, I, thank bro, you for I, I watching, do my job, bro. bro. Yeah, like, thank you for watching. Niggas be like, yo, you know this? How you know this? Bro, I do my fucking job. Thank but you anyway, for watching, Whatever, man. so, <laughs> yo. It's crazy that you said that because the one thing I wrote this down that stood out to me and I thought it was dope and you you caught yourself and I was mad that you catch yourself but I'm going to go into it, right? You were talking about uh, Charlie Munger, right? Yeah. Rest in peace. Come on. And you were talking about how you heard things mm -hmm. or how he said things to mm -hmm. you and you're like, wait, I, I never met this man. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, I don't do that. Don't yeah, do that because yeah, in my yeah, mind, yeah. I'm like, it's great because yeah. it shows you the power of reading. It shows yeah. you the power of social media because you're like, man, he taught me. Yeah. He taught me. He yeah. taught me. And I'm like, wait, you, I don't even know this you dude. You never even yeah. met this man. So like, that, so the fact that you said that, like, nah, you are right. So as much as as bad as I want to feel for my people, it's like, nah, it's really no excuses because yeah. we do have access to the yeah. information. So when you said that, I'm like, yo, I'm like, damn, like that really opened my yeah. eyes. Like, we sleeping on the information that we yeah. do have, and it's because again, environment. So what happens is what we what we don't realize is that environment. I said this before. Environment does a few things for us. Environment sets the standard. Environment enforces the standard. And the environment rewards the standard. Mm. Right? So think about it like this. 
we're going we're gonna to talk about two different case scenarios. So let's say you grew up in, grew up in Baltimore, mm -hmm. straight up, right? The standard for that for a black man, probably coming up in the hood, probably a certain type of car. It's not even about home ownership. Mm -hmm. Certain type of car. You dress a certain way. I was about to say, a certain type and of as, sneakers. And as, a, and as a man, drill talk, it's there's a number of females that you deal with that gives you that, oh, he get the, he get them. Mm -hmm. So that's a standard. And then once you accomplish those things, the environment enforces that, like, yup, this the standard. Look at Jay. Jay mm -hmm. did this. He got, he fresh, he got that shit on. Mm -hmm. He got the whip and he got, got some hoes. Such and such, such and such, such and such. It, that's just so a fact. So the environment set the standard, it enforced the standard, and then it rewarded the standard because now, because you had all three, guess what you get now? You get more women. Mm. You get more dudes that's like, you get more of that, you the man. So now the environment did that. Now let's change that. Mm. Let's come up with a wealthy environment. So let's say you got this this. This guy's a business owner. He wealthy. So now the standard for them is, yo, you have to graduate high school with this type of grade. You got to go to college and do this. You have to get this type of job or start this type of business. And if you don't do that, yo, you're a failure. Mm. So now what's the standard? The yeah. environment doesn't set that standard. Now the Johnsons and the this is the Williamses and the sudden such, their kids are doctors and lawyers and they work on Wall Street. So now the pressure is, shit, my kids, okay, there's a new standard now, mm -hmm. right? So environment sets the standard, rewards the standard, reinforces the standard. Why did you, so when you hear people say this, and I, this is, I love this, when you, he, when you hear people say, yo, I need to move out my city to go to another city, in actuality, what we saying to ourselves is, yo, we need new standards. Mm. I need new standards. I need, I need, I, I needed to come to Atlanta. Why? Atlanta gave me new standards from New Orleans. <laughs> it gave me new standards. Why? Because I can see dudes in my, it's not saying that, those standards don't exist in certain. One of the things I did when I came to the A, bro, and I told my I told Fly this last night. I said, bro, when I first moved to the A, I wasn't trying to go live in the hood, dog. I wasn't trying to go nothing against Summer Hill. I wasn't trying to go live in the bluff. I wasn't going trying to live in Summer Hill. I wasn't going trying to live in the zoo. Bro, I'm from New Orleans, bro. I'm from the hood. I don't need to come here and do that. I'm trying to go live in somebody high rise come somewhere, on, bro. Come on. I done did that already. I don't want to be a gangster in Atlanta, bro. I'm straight. They got enough for them. I left New Orleans. I'm, bro, I'm trying to be where, what we be doing. So, boom, what was the standard? Now? All right, bro. Dude, bro, dude got the high rise and mm -hmm. they got the, okay, mm -hmm. that's who we... Okay, we got a new standard. That's so fact. We I got said, a new I standard. Said the same I said, babe. I said, babe, we're gonna stay, we're gonna do the high rise for a year. We end up doing it for two, but it's still it was like, man, it's a new standard. We gotta at least do it. We got a new standard. It's different. So we set a new standard. Now nah, for people gonna be like, that ain't it. But it was a difference from I live next door, this a trap house right here, this a band door right here. This now nah, we're not doing that. Mm -mm. So when you 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 leave your environment because the old standard has wore you down. Mm. And you like, yo, I just need a new standard. Because one thing we will do is, if we get a new environment, we'll live up to the standard in that environment. Mm -hmm. Automatically. Mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm here. And, and now, here's what happens. When you hear somebody move from one city to another city, they brag on a new city they're in because there's a new set of standards for them. Mm -hmm. They done released the old standards. They came to the new city. They embraced the culture, whatever they're around. And now, that's the standard. Mm -hmm. Until you get them in the environment. Now, here's what happens. You come to Atlanta or you go to another city. And then what happens when you meet people that's doing something different? You're like, damn. Dude, did a, he, a, he, a million? he did a million in a day? What the fuck I'm not doing? You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? So my standard kind of changed. Like, damn, wait. A million in a day? Mm-hmm. What? I'm doing something wrong, man. What's going on? All right. So this is, okay, this is, this is what we doing right here? All right, bet. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? So you start to change that. Mm. Um, and that helps you evolve. So for me, again, my thing, and I'll just be honest with you, my, my goal is not to be the best podcaster, right? So I tell my team, you can't even call our show a podcast. We got a show. And our goal is to be better than CNBC. So how do we create a team that mimics that machine but talks to our people? 
because I know one thing. They will never, ever, ever talk to us because we not their clientele. But guess what? I can. So how do we create shows? How do we create content? How do we create media? How do we get ad representation that helps us build that machine up? Mm. And that'll put me here for 20 years. That's a new standard. Bro, I want to uh, stay on standards. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because, yo, just reflecting, right? Um, and like my show is about... It's less about what you do and who you are. Right? Yeah, man. Your show dope, man. I appreciate it, bro. It's so dope, man. Nah, thank you. I just want to stay on standards and um not to dwell on the bad times, but let's go. When we talk about like our neighborhoods and mm -hmm. where we come from and the standard that it it, it has, it kind of remind me of and again, I never I've been to prison. I was locked up you for maybe go. two days. Right? <laughs> but I can I can you assume right. I can assume that when you go to prison, if you don't do the right things, how it can set you back. And how people would come out of jail. Yeah. And it's like, you hear about people talking about like grown men coming out of jail, but they still mentally kids, right? It reminds me of kind of like the standard that our community set. And it's unfortunate because like when you say the standard that it was, and that as a, as a man, I, I people probably don't understand, but I preach to like younger men about the importance of like being faithful to your woman. The yeah, importance man. of taking care of your family. Because <sighs> when I was coming up, that wasn't, I didn't understand that standard. Yeah. And I looked. And I look back now, how far it, it, it put me back. Yeah. Like, I was talking to my my wife now, how... Salute to that, No, nah, I appreciate it, bro. I was talking to my wife how about how, like, to that, being man. faithful was hard. And most people might not understand, but it's hard because the standard wasn't being faithful. Yeah. And I'm, I, I've am i been set back so many years that I'm just here. It's been six years. For us, it's a long time. But yeah. for the expand of my life, that ain't nothing. Nah, it's an inkling. So... I, I talk about the standard. The standard was you get money. It was even to the point where, and it, it, it's, it's embarrassing now that I know better to talk yeah. about it, where when I was getting chicks only because this nigga couldn't get it. Yeah. Or because I'm that man, so I don't even like her. But look how look what that did to my my intimate relationship. Look what yeah. that did to how I address women. You get what I'm saying? Like, I'm only yeah. getting chicks. I don't even, I'm not even interested in you. Like, yeah. I'm just, I just know I can do it, so that nigga can't get it, so that's my flex. Yeah. You feel me? But that standard... And yep. our community set us back. Like that. Yeah. Kind of how jail set people back. And it's like, 100%. it's just like, man, I don't know. I don't even, it's not even a question to ask about it. It's just like. So, um, let me, let me, let's dig into that two different ways. Mm. So, the other day I saw this post. I love the way that everybody now is a relationship expert. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me laugh, right? It just yeah. makes me, you got a bunch of broken people. You know what I'm saying? You got a bunch of broken people, emotionally broken people, uh, projecting fears, insecurities, and traumas on everybody, mm. right? And so I, I saw something the other day, and I saw, uh, I, I always go look to see what the women say. And I saw a, women, a woman say in the comment, um, the, the, a, a man says that he's not ready for a relationship, and he fought, he throw your life away. And then I saw another woman say, uh, uh, when, when, when men say it's not you, it's me, right? Uh, I, the one that got me was when he, in the, in the, a woman said, uh, I never grew up with a father, so I ain't know how to treat women. But you 40 years old, you should know how to treat women. So I'm just looking at the comments. And I laughed at that because all of those things are real. Mm. The reason why they are real let me salute you for being faithful to your woman because it is hard. Because your woman probably is beautiful. But there's a million beautiful women in here, in this world. They don't stop making them. They get younger. They And you're still a man. And, you, and your eye is what you get. And so you have to have the restraint to say, yep, she beautiful, but ain't worth my wife. And not even halfway. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So salute to you for that. And that takes restraint. That takes discipline. That takes understanding the value of your woman. That's mm -hmm. amazing. But what happens is, is I don't think that, I don't think that, I think that the media, social media has put us at a wall against who's better than who instead of helping us understand each other cool. as human beings. We, we lack the time to understand that there's no cookie cutter approach on how to, it, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, five men in here. All of us got five different emotional, mental experiences 
with manhood. Mm. With manhood, right? So, me, bro, I've never met my father in my life. The time I did was about to meet him. My mama called me. She like, yo, your daddy is, I say, my who? Mm -hmm. My what? I'm 32 years old. I just did a 10-year bid in prison. My who? I got a two-year-old child. Nah, we good. She was like, he, he, about, he about to pass away and he won't meet you. I said, nah, he got to take that to his grave. Mm. She was like, you can't be like that. I was like, nah, I can't open that up at 32. You gone, bro. I'm, now I'm about to live my life. Now, I, I don't know if I was right or wrong, but I knew at two years old, I had already made a bunch of sacrifices for my little girl. A bunch of them. And so, but I also realized now that I'm going to therapy, that there was a reason why at this phase of my life, at 41, why I would deal with so many amazing women. But once I felt like I was getting close to them, I would push away. So we had to dig into it. Here was the issue. When I was 13, my mom went to prison. My grandmother passed away, which led to me being homeless. Because my family really couldn't take me in. My uncle tried to take me in, but because I was just so wild at 14 around now, because I had been home for a couple months, it was like, yo, we can't do it. So I go back to New Orleans. Also, I went to prison because the woman, the female who I was dealing with, set me up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so when she set me up, bro, two dudes running in the room on me, put a maggot level in my head. I almost get killed. I wound up going to prison. I was shooting the dude six times. So immediately, the first three traumatic experiences in my life were around women who I cared for. But because I coped with it and dealt with it, I didn't look at it to say, no, this is an issue for me. You ain't address it. I never addressed it because we don't learn how to address those type of situations. We just know how to. Right? But what happens is when you when a woman who you who may not know the story, um, you may not have that with, oh, he don't know how to, oh, you playing games. and It's not really that, bro. We human beings and we deal with trauma differently until we address the trauma. We can't heal from the trauma. 100%. Right? So then you put me, I go to prison. I'm around a bunch of men. I'm 16, I'm impressionable. I'm a man child, 100%, but I'm still impressionable. Mm -hmm. So now I'm around a bunch of men that's telling me different things and believe it or not, bro, you taking that in. All right, so that's the whole thing. So now I grew out of that. All right, cool, what happened? I, don't, I never had a father, but guess what? I'm a perfect dad. Man, I moved my daughter mom to Atlanta, bought her own house. We ain't had sex in eight years. My daughter, eight years old, guess what? She'd be like, yo, that's my best friend. Dude, good. He A1. I pay all the bills. You don't got to pay nothing. I just need you to make sure my little one good. I ain't never had no daddy, but I learned. Right? And so what happens is we got to give ourselves grace. We don't have no grace for each other. Instagram, we don't got no grace for each other. This is what we supposed to do. This is how it's supposed to be. That's it. You stupid. You playing games. You a little boy. You immature. You broke. You this. We don't got no grace for each other. None. So now when we talk about prison, bro, I wouldn't wish prison on my worst enemy. I did 10 years in that joint, bro. At 16 years old, bro, I had, to, I had to grow up fast. I don't care how much a man I thought I was. When I got in there, I realized, oh, this is a big boy game. They don't care. I watched dudes 15 years old get raped by grown men. Ain't no, it is what I was in a cell with my homie. He got set on fire. I went to sell my other homie. We, he wasn't my homie. Him and the dude was beefing. He couldn't get some. He took all this shit out the toilet, threw it in the cell. I'm like, bro, get, man, get me out of here. So when Boosie said he saw some shit and he called his mom and said, mom, get me out of here, I understood it. Because at some point, you just be like, bro, this shit too much. This shit too much. I don't pull, This ain't how human beings supposed to act, bro. This ain't right. Bro. I got cut right here. I got cut in my back, bro. I done seen dudes hang themselves. Bro, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. On top of that, you be way in a country somewhere and then white folks, you really get to see white folks. Mm -hmm. You think you deal with racism with police? Go in one of them small country towns where the, the prison is ducked off. Them white folks gonna show you, oh, this is what we talking about right here. This the good old boys right here, bro. They gonna beat, my, I got the brakes beat off me. A white dude called me a boy. I said, ain't no boy. I punched the security guard in his face. Probably the worst thing I ever did in my life, dog. 
Them people beat me to death, almost beat me to death, bro. Sprayed me down three, four days in a row, bro. I'm talking about spray me until I couldn't breathe. And they had the audacity to say, oh, you body body right now. Mm. I'm, I'm crying like, bro, stop. Man, stop. Stop. Toya, Lil Wayne's uh, kid's mother, Big, yeah. me and her <laughs> brother. Whoa, that was my dog. We got sprayed down together. He don't want to stop rapping. That was my dog. He rapping all day, all night. And people tell him, stop rapping. He tell him, man, fuck y'all. Blah. People come and spray all us down. He don't want to stop rapping. Bro, I'm talking about, I don't wish that on my worst enemy. So when I see young boys, go, I'm like, bro, you about to throw your life away. And you don't got nobody to tell you you're going to throw your life away. Because the same person that's telling you all that gangster shit, because when you go to prison, bro, they not even going to holler at you. Guess what? In about five years, they going to meet you up there. And they're going to be the ones that's going to probably either try to fight you, jump you, steal from you, or try to rape you. Mm. I promise you, if he got enough time. So, bro, prison showed me a whole nother side of manhood, dog. And you got to be, sh and a lot of people ain't ready for that. Bro, I wish that shit on my worst enemy. So, yep, when dudes leave prison, do they come home? Bro, it took me seven years to understand who I was outside of prison. Real talk. Took me seven years, bro. Remember, I went to prison at 16. I came home 26. Bro, I only had probably had sex with one or two women. Real talk. Real talk. So I'm in prison like, man, I can't wait to get out of here. And I get out of here, I'm like, whoa, what the hell is this shit? What is this? Mm-mm. It don't make sense right here. And bro, and I could, I, I kid you nowhere to lie, I remember being in prison and about seven, about 18, 19, telling myself, oh, I could do another 10 years. It's easy work. Because you know why? You start hearing people saying they've adapted to the prison lifestyle. They've adapted to crime. Even, what you going to do you get home? Oh, nigga, I'm going to be the biggest dope boy ever. I'm going to get that old boy. My partner I got killed. Yep, I'm going to get at him. But that's another. I could do another 10. I could do another 15. That's easy work, bro. As long as they don't double bail me. So that's when you already got a conviction and they hit you with another, you, you do your time flat. Or you don't, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I could do it. I could do another 10 in me. I got another 15 in me. You hit that. You hit that. And you like, wait, what? Mm. You hit so much, you start to being like, well, I get home 26. Shit, I could do another 10. I come home 46. You start measuring your life out. Oh, I could do another 10. I come home about 46. I'm ready to chill out right then. You know why? Because the environment set a standard. Mm. The environment already told me my best chance of living is probably in prison anyway. Mm. I ain't going to probably make it to see 25, 26, 27. Grandpa, that's out the window. I ain't met a nigga yet that been a grandfather. So that's out the window. So you already understand your life expectancy. And what happens is you start to now uphold that standard. It's the standard. Because guess what? I'm a gangster in the street. And I mean, don't talk about if I can move a couple things around in the pen. If I can move some things around, oh, I know how to get tattoo ink. I know how to get weed. Mm. I can get a cell phone. I got a plug because I work in a laundry. I got a plug with the people that come in at nighttime. Oh, I'm big though. I'll never be this on the street. So why, what are we talking about here? I'm big dog in here. So a person on the street ain't gonna understand that. But for me, I understand it. But I also know what it take to break it. It took me seven years, bro. Seven years. I've been home 15 years now, bro. I still use the bathroom with one leg in my boxes. If I try to pull both of my boxes down, bro, I'm a, I'm a, what is this? I'm gonna get, what is, I can't do this. Mm. I still gotta use the bathroom like that. So. Not to go in that prison no, right now. No, 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 I no, 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 that's I great. That shit on but no, I'm glad you, I'm glad you did that because you, you paint the picture for the next question. And I don't know how touchy this is, but it ain't touchy. We here. <laughs> so, so many people judge the the men that's behind bars, right? Mm -hmm. The men and women that's behind bars. But like you said, we we are already like we're born into unfair situations, unfair yeah, territories, right? Hundred percent. So you go to prison, you start to think like that. Everybody isn't as strong as you, right? As, mm -hmm. as strong as the person that can come home like a wallow and, and start getting Salute to it, right? Salute to wallow, yeah. <clears throat> but think about it like this, man. 
people judge them, they don't give them grace. Mm -hmm. Because you imagine, even if in, because you can understand jail because you've been there. Mm -hmm. You haven't been in a position where you couldn't provide for your child. Mm -hmm. Let's let's take this grace word and flip it. Mm -hmm. And when it was time to meet your pops, right? Mm -hmm. If you could have been, if you could have gave him the same amount of grace that mm -hmm. you wish you would have got in mm -hmm. that seven year span of finding yourself. So you mean why didn't I give my pops grace? Not even why not. It's not oh, even a why. Should I not. have? It's, it's, it's so imagine I'm, like so. I, I look at that situation as, and I, that's why I led with. I could have been right or wrong. Mm. I reacted as a human being, right? And and I still, I, bro, I still be asking God, did I do the right thing in that moment? Mm. Right? Um, we learn as we go. Right? We ain't gonna always make the best decision. One thing I love about ET is ET said, "You dictate the caliber of your life by being an elite decision maker." Mm. Man, I love that. That's hard. You 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 dictate the caliber of your life. By being so, let's transition into being an elite decision maker. So, no matter what the decision is we presented with, we can make it not just a good decision, we can make an elite decision. And one of the things I break that down to is again, so I study Islam, you know, I consider myself as a Muslim man because that's what helped me in prison, not to be protected, but that helped give me life. That 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 breathed life into me, but I still studied. Like T.D. Jakes is somebody I study all the time. Um, John Bereave, just so many great people. But Jesus was an elite decision maker. Mm. And I don't want to get religious on your show, but here's, no, one, of the elite, here's one of the elite decisions he made. So Jesus was put in this predicament. And none of my Bible people don't really like tell me up. I'm just paraphrasing. So Jesus was put in this predicament where these are two amazing predicaments that I say, damn, that was elite decision. So the first decision was um, the woman who committed adultery, right? So Leah committed adultery, and the sin for that was stoning, right? Stoning. And the people put Jesus in a predicament because Jesus said, nah, don't, don't stone her. So the people was like, what you mean don't stone her? And somebody come to him and say, Jesus, what you mean don't stone her? It's in the law. Here's an elite decision. I could say stone her. But then I know that ain't grace and I know that ain't what God want me to do, right? But I also know the people who asked me this question trying to put me in a position to go against the law. Jesus says, I bet that is the law. But he, without sin, cast the first stone. Mm. That's elite decision. Why is it an elite decision? Because then you say, if you willing to stone her, you gotta stone yourself. then I can stone you too for what you're doing wrong. Mm. All right, nobody does it. That's a decision he made mentally. How do I be put in a perplexed situation and still make the right decision? Not just the right decision, an elite, elite decision. decision. Mm -hmm. Cause the right decision was, yeah, it's in a book, Stone. Oh, yeah. Another situation. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite ones because this was just miraculous. I don't even know how he even did this. So Nicodemus. So Jesus walks in and he see the people, uh, I, I want to say in the temple selling stuff and he, Jesus going crazy. He Jesus pit mad that he see this, right? And so Nicodemus asks Jesus. About the taxes. About the taxes. <laughs> yeah. You heard me say it before, right? Yeah, yeah. So he asked him about the taxes and he said, yo, so I see you looking so many, like I see you looking like you tripping. What do you think? Do you think that people should pay Caesar or do you think that people should not pay Caesar? Right? Man, you put an average man in that situation, he going to be like, yo, I don't want to die, man. Pay that pay, man. pay Caesar. <laughs> but you know, if I say that, <laughs> then the people go against me. Mm. But if I don't say that, Caesar going to kill me for sure. Jesus is like, look, you right. Check this out. Pay Caesar with Caesar dupe and then give God the rest. Mm. Elite decision. Why is it elite decision? Because I ain't about to try to threaten this, but I also want you to understand that you got to get God his dues too. Elite decision. Mm. If, if we can get great at decision making, the problem why most of us aren't where we want to be at in life, because at best, we average decision makers. Put in a tough situation, most people panic. 
put under too much pressure, a lot of people will kill themselves. But an elite decision maker not going to let the temperament of the environment and the burden of the decision not make them make an elite decision. So how do you become an elite decision maker? One, you got to know yourself. Two, I say that you have to understand God's will for your life. Because if you never panic, you know, God never put the, the, the spirit of fear in us. The reason why people, a lot of times people make bad decisions is out of fear. You're scared of what's going to happen. You're scared of what's the, uh, the consequence behind it. Um, and then one, you just not under, you don't know how to act under pressure. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's being able to ask myself, all right, like, what's the best thing right here? And I, this is a saying that I've said, my best play not in God playbook. Because my best play is about me. God's best play is the best play for me. Mm -hmm. And if I can connect to that, that means how do you build a relationship with somebody? Mm -hmm. You talk to them. The more you talk to a person, the better you get. Think about when we first got here to where we at now. The whole temperament of the conversation unchanged. The room feel a little different. Why? You got a feel for who's sitting on the other side of you. If you had some questions, you done rearrange them. If you didn't, you're like, well, I got some new ones. I ain't gonna lie. You feel what I'm saying? You got some new ones. You know why? Because, oh, this is what I'm dealing with. And I'm at the same way. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, man, dude, we can, we can talk. The more you talk, the more you communicate, the better relationship get. The better the relationship they get. Believe it or not, I'm gonna leave this relate. I'm gonna leave this room with something from you. You're gonna leave this room with something from me. That was an impactful relationship. That was an impactful um connection. Uh a confrontation, uh, whatever it was. Mm. Well, that's what happens. The more you talk to God, man, the more you pray, the more you have those moments, you get better at making decisions because you already know that everything gonna work for you and not against you. No, nah, facts. And the more, you know, it's funny, it was, it was a while ago. I was and like, I don't mean man, to get religious on nah, like nah, that, nah, bro. Nah, nah. Like, you ain't gotta, you ain't never gotta say that on this show, trust me. I got niggas in the back like, nah, that's, that's the conversation for me, let's go. But nah, yeah, yeah. um, Sidebar, yeah, and the more, like, it's funny because I didn't, I never understood how to hear God. Yeah. But again, the more you talk to him, the more you, talk more to you him. be able to hear his voice. Yeah. I, but again, all of that is good, though. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you are great with your words. And I feel like you are like a coach now. You are a coach. Man. Uh. And you're a motivational speaker. <laughs> but no, hold up. No, hold up, hold up, hold up. So all that is good mm -hmm. for coaching sake, for sure. And I know if if was a fifth, we all be drunk. Oh, I know that, but I'm just curious. I like hypothetical though. Yeah, I'm just curious though. If you could go back and redo it, would you go see your pops? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it did a lot of things work on that on me about that because I'm I'm looking at every decision I make and how does it impact me as a man. Uh, how does it impact me as a dog? How does how it impact my child? Um, and I'm still pray, I still pray on it. You, you still know? pray on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I realize it's the man who, there's, there's things about my life. So when I look at my mom, I know some of the things I got from her, but she ain't made me by herself. Mm -hmm. It took a man to implement that sperm in her and, and be a part of the equation that gave me life. Mm -hmm. And there's parts of me that I'll never know. There's some things that I do that's maybe, maybe a temperament, maybe my grind, maybe my fingers, maybe my toes, maybe my chest, maybe the way I think in certain situations come from that man. I'll never know that. I'll never know that. So I'm always going through my life, and it's not in a bad way, but I'm, my puzzle will never be complete from a genetic, genetically understanding who I am. You feel what I'm saying? Now... For my daughter, it also is things about myself that I can't explain to her because I don't know. But I'm explaining to her for me and her mom, we having that. So that's part of the thing I'm like, damn. But then I ask myself, shit, how much could he tell me on his deathbed anyway? You know what I'm saying? So it's it's always a battle with me that I'm, it's one of the things I go to therapy about, bro. Dude from therapy told me one thing. He said, uh, the reason why you gravitate to people like T, Jason, Eric Thomas, and he said, because you're missing the father. You're missing the father. That's why you gravitate to men of power like that because you're already a powerful man. And so you're trying to figure out where your power came from. It wasn't just because you survived the street. It wasn't just because you've been through this. You got that. Yep, but where the, 
where the power came from that gave you that type of tenacity, that gave you that type of resiliency because you don't really see it in your mama. You feel me? And so we all, man, yo, we all puzzles. And so what we trying to do in life is put our puzzle together. We trying to put our puzzle together because we won't feel complete. That's why when women break up with men, they be like, I want closure. They need something to get it. I need to close this door and be complete right here. So we look for completion. Yeah. And, and that's why I asked you because like even just reading The Way of the Superior Man, we understand. Oh, that's one of my favorite books. Yeah, that, that's a good book. Shout out to you for that, man. They say how like men are like problem solvers at, at heart, right? At heart. And like we're trying to fix this problem within, but you never met your pops. And I'm just wondering how much does that mess with you? It does. Bro, I would be, man, I would be lying if I said I'm all right with it. I can say I, like maybe a year ago I'd have been like, yeah, because I but because I've been in therapy, bro, and I'd be talking about stuff that I ain't never thought I'd talk about. Like I can say that I understand that a piece of me is missing. Your therapy is crazy. You feel me? I yeah. understand. I understand completely that a piece of me is missing. Mm. Um, and there's nothing I could do about it. Bro, one of the greatest questions my, a ther my therapist have ever asked me, bro, it was so straight to the point, so cut clear, and just, I would have thought it would been an easy question. I was talking about my moms and relationship with my moms, and my therapist was like, how you feel? I'm like, man, I love my moms. What I, the struggle... I wouldn't have this tenacity, like you mm -hmm. said. I wouldn't have this drive to go get it. Without my mom's missing a few things, me coming up, I wouldn't want more for myself, right? And she's like, that's good. It's good that you give her grace, that you understand mm -hmm. and you love her. But how does it make you feel? Yeah. And mm -hmm. as like as simple as that question was, I, I that was the first time I ever broke down and cried in front yeah. of like, cause like it, it did hurt. Like those like missing my games, they hurt. Yeah, it made me stronger. Yeah, it made me want to be a better father. Yeah, it made me all of that. But I'm not because I wish I had that. One hundred percent. And I understand it, but it hurt. If I had to go back to that feeling, Damn, that hurt. Bro. Like that hurt, bro. It's because we're so good at surface level responding. We great at that. You love your mom? Hell yeah, I love my mom. Why? <laughs> she gave birth to me. Nah, <laughs> tell me some things she did. You'd be like, wait, hold up, I gotta think. You know what I'm saying? But now when you start to think, you realize, damn, like, so I realized one of the reasons why I was like backing up from women so much because I watched my mom, I watched my mom put me in a situation to be homeless. Mm. And I felt like, damn, you were supposed to protect me. My grandmother passed away, yo, I'm homeless now. You were supposed to protect me. All right, so now I got to figure out the streets on my own. I got to learn this shit based off what I saw you do. And then when my mama came home, I still, she still ain't give me what I wanted. Mm. And then when I went to trial, she wasn't there. And I was like, yo, I watch you short for other people, but not for me. Yo, this is a problem. But yeah, I'm still like, yo, I love, if you ask me right now, bro, I love my mama. Mm -hmm. That's my, I'm gonna take care. But there's a part of me that's like, why you couldn't be there? So again, when you go to therapy, and not even, I'm not even gonna say therapy. Watch this, bro. Men have a hard time feeling safe in America. Mm -hmm. Black men, I don't, I've never been a white man. I've never been an Asian man. I've never been a Spanish man. I don't know what they feel like. Black men have a hard time feeling safe in America. Because look where most of us come from. Bro. So you, you, you trying to communicate your feelings, you ain't never really sat in no space and say, yo, I feel safe right here. Even amongst your homies. Like, you may talk, like, this may, let's just say all five of us grew up together, we good. But there's a certain level, like, man, I probably can't tell him that I feel depressed that my mama wasn't there for me. I don't know if I can talk to my dog like that. We probably could talk about women. We probably talk about getting some money. We probably talk about some street shit. We probably even talk about some other things. But the vulnerability of telling that black man, man, my mama wasn't there for me, bro. And that shit make me feel some guy. I'm scared how he gonna look at me. He might think I'm a bitch ass. I'm sorry. He might think I'm soft. And in the back of your mind, like, ah, oh, fuck that nigga. So if now, so now you like, and so now you like, if he think of me like that, that might take away from, cause he might look at me as big dog. Yeah. Nah, I ain't gonna do that. Mm. I'm good. So you ain't never really self safe. So now you literally walking through life with a release that you wanna get rid of, but you ain't never found a safe space. Think about this. And I want to use this example. So cows have 
the largest amount of toxic gases in them, CO2 gases, right? A cow could be living and be doing really well, but he'll just crank over to the side. And the farmers got to watch him. They'll get so full of that gas, a farmer could really go to him with a knife and jig him, let the gas out of him, he get up and keep going. But that's how men are emotionally. We full of toxic ass feelings. We full of toxic ass emotions, toxic ass thoughts, but we don't never get a chance to poke the hole in us and let us out. So now that shit show up on us in different ways. You know what I'm saying? We show up drinking, you show up smoking, you show up messing over women, you show up not being able to show no emotion, you, you non-communicative, communicative, you don't got no communication skills, you don't got no empathy for nothing. Cause mm -hmm. you just blow it up and everybody like, why you like that? And you can't even explain that shit cause you ain't safe enough to say, yo, I just won't talk about my feelings and the shit that's really hurting me and I don't got nowhere to talk to. Mm -hmm. You ain't got nowhere to do that. So when you go to a therapist, you like, yo, I just want to feel safe right here, bro. I don't mind paying you just for the safe space. And it starts, <laughs> but it, it starts as that adolescent stage, though, right? 100%. You think about it like single moms and like just old school parenting, right? Trauma on stop, trauma. <laughs> stop crying before I get something to cry for. Right, one hundred percent. Like those things, and like. Don't talk back to me or like yep. don't ask me why. Mm -hmm. Don't do, do what I do, say. Do, do what do, I do. You feel me? Like it's 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 just crazy, man. Thinking about it, but that's why I ask you these questions because I too was in a similar situation where right. my moms we moved out. Like the only place, and this is sad. The only place that I knew was home was the projects. Mm -hmm. Right. We moved out of there because my moms wanted to get have a better relationship with my grandmother because they never had a good relationship. Mm. My grandmother passed. Mm. I'm a teenager. I'm doing teenager shit. I guess I wasn't washing dishes. My uncle put me out. Mm. But my mom didn't leave with me. Mm. And I remember asking my mom's like, yep. why? Like, I would never let my daughter. Like, you if, feel if, me? If my son, my, do my daughter now, if my daughter was to get put out, she's never going. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? But my mom's explained, I understand. She said, it was easier for me to be make sure you were good mm -hmm. and and have to make, then to have to make sure we were good. Mm -hmm. So I understood it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it still hurt. It hurt. And, it's a, and watch this. It's a better conversation as a kid than as an adult. That's crazy. That's a fact. You feel me? Mm. Give me some understanding. Mm. Don't let me hold that in for so many years. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? And now I'm 20 years in looking for closure. That's a fact. <laughs> you feel me? I'm 20 years in looking for closure now. Like, why? Mm. And so like, one of the things I do with my daughter, man, it's so dope is I let her talk. Tell your dad how you feel. Mm. You good, you bad. I pull into her. I do, my, I do my best not to yell at her. Like, I don't. And if I do something wrong, I'll go back and be like, baby girl, I'm sorry. Daddy, apologize. I wasn't supposed to do that. I never curse at her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I let her understand. Like, I tell her I love her probably 3,000 times a day. I squeeze her all day. All the stuff I ain't never felt, I overcompensate for loving her. My therapist told me this. But the thing about that is you start to realize this is what I wanted. Mm. Bro, imagine I'm doing a 10-year bid, bro. I can count on my hand the letters that I got from my family, dog. That shit hurt me, dog. That shit hurt me to my heart, bro. 10 years. I can count on my hand like, all right, probably about 10 letters I got, probably about three money orders. I right, bet we back, we back in hustle mode. I right, bet laundry, boom, we charging $5 to wash the clothes. Boom, boom, boom. I got about 60 clients. I'm bringing probably like $150 a month. Let's run it. Or oh, you want your clothes on? We got the press machine that's gonna cost you two dollars for the pants, dollar fifty for the shirt. You want some socks too? I got you. What you need? Your your drawers yellow. You need some new pack of drawers? Boom! I got you. I work in the inventory. You want the three pack or the five pack? Whatever you need, I got it. Don't even trip. I'm back in hustle mode. I ain't counting on no money. Okay, bet. Oh, they got five units. Guess what? I need so many people in each unit to bring me so much money. We ain't tripping. But the problem with that is, you get used to being in hustle mode. Mm. And because you're in hustle mode, we all know that there's no, that means you in hustle mode because you don't feel safe. Because somebody in safe mode, you ain't in hustle mode. Mm -mm. You good. I don't care what's going on around here. I'm safe. We eating. Mm -hmm. You feel me? <laughs> so you start adapting to your survival natures. Mm. And 
that that's a whole nother. Now we talking about chemical imbalance. That's survival is a whole nother chemical release than being calm. And so now what happens is your body starts to do that. Now you start to always be in fight or flight fight mode or fl because you always in fight or flight mode. Now you can't be an elite decision maker. You can't focus. You can't even think straight. You can't be an elite decision maker. You can't do that. So again, we got to find a way. And that's what healing come in at for us as men. That's what us becoming better fathers, us becoming better dads, us being able to, one of the things I, I really be holding myself on with is making a decision when it comes to like sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, bro, we not about to be out here just, bro. I'm in a situation in my life, bro, where I'm successful, I'm everywhere, I'm in Atlanta, bro. Bro, I could be a freaking porn star if I wanted to. You feel me? But I make the decision to say, bro, we not doing that. I got a daughter, I got moral code, I got integrity, and I personally can't be out here saying I'm empowering people if I'm trying to screw everybody I'm trying to empower. Got to move a little bit different. You know what I'm saying? So... Now, you have to now start saying, I got to safeguard myself. What is the rules and declarations? What is the oaths and the codes that we have on our own self as men? What's that oath and that code that morale that I live by? Every time a motherfucker get hard, I ain't got to go jump on something, bro. Sit your stupid ass down, <clears throat> man. Go work out or something. Go jump in the shower, my dog. Nah, no, facts. That's the, the important, the you power I mean? of like, the power of discipline. That's it, bro. Uh, Jocko, I can't think his name, say discipline. Discipline is freedom. Mm -hmm. And I said that a man who is undisciplined cannot accomplish nothing in this world, yet he is setting himself up for disaster. Mm. But if we look at the great men in the world, what is what is always taking them down? Lack of discipline. Mm -hmm. Whether it was their anger, whether it was their lust, they ain't had no discipline. So if you ain't got no discipline, if you can't control your anger, that's one thing I had to learn how to master because survival mode keeps you angry. Mm, mm, mm. That shit keeps you angry because you mad that you in survival mode all the goddamn time. And now you start looking at people not in survival mode like, why you ain't in this mode? Why you ain't getting it like this? Why you ain't feeling like this? Why mm. you ain't at it like this? Why you ain't hustling like me? Cuz you surviving, nigga, I'm living. Mm. It's two different mindsets we got going on here. You survive, I'm living. What we doing? And so as you start to understand what are the things that put you in that mode and now go back to it, bro. That's why I pray so much. That's why I fast so much. That's why I read the Quran and the Bible so much. It's because I always want to be the man that say, yo, I got control. I got control of myself. I got control of my thoughts. I got control of my, my disciplines, bro. I'm not letting nobody trick me out of my position. Bro, I'll bump into somebody and be like, hey, my bad, dog. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Bro, you good? Mm -hmm. I'm good, bro. I don't drink. You know why? Because it takes me out of... But cause people, also, people don't understand. Like, you talk about this a lot. How much it costs to be a, a black uh, person? How much it costs? How much does America cost? Well, he right? just listened to my last episode. But, he good. Nah. He good. <laughs> he good. He good. <laughs> but the thing about it is like... <laughs> but even that, though, like, but how much it costs much to it not cost. be disciplined, though? How much it costs you? That's what you need to see because... That can cost you a lot. Well, it's gonna cost you everything. The cost, we always look at the actual dollar amount that something is costing us in the moment, but we're not looking at the repercussions of what the price is gonna cost us. Mm. So think about this. I hire about 13 people that work with me, not for me. I take care of my mama. I take care of my daughter, mama. I take care of my daughter. My homie who actually saved me from a murder charge when I first came home from prison. A dude did me some dumb crap in New Orleans, and I called my dog. I said, bro, bring a chopper, bro. My dog brought a chopper to me, and he said, bro, check this out. I'm not going to tell you not to do this, but just know we just come home from doing a big. He just did 15, 20 for manslaughter. I did 10. He said, I ain't going to tell you not to do it, but don't let him trick you out your spot. Mm. My dog, we both hit us. <clears throat> I wound up not doing it. I let him... He asked me for $1,500. He wanted to go to the fight, um, but he had just, he, he paying for his wedding. That's the reason why. Weddings cost. <laughs> mm. Weddings cost. Yes. So he said, um, and I'm going to give it back to you um, when, I get, when I get paid Monday. I'm like, all right, bet. So he went to the, the fight, and he went to, a, he a 49ers fanatic. Went to the 49ers game. Monday came. 
He said, I'm about to send you the money now. I'm just making sure the, the information good. I said, bro, you ain't even got to send it to me. I just want to see you going to be a man of your word. I said, I'm good, bro. I'm straight. Why did I say that? Integrity going to go a long way with me. But at the same time, what would it cost him if he didn't show up and hold his word down? Mm. A lot more than 1500 You feel me? It's going to cost you way more than 1500 A lot more. You feel me? What does it cost for you being a person that provide for your family and provide for all these people and you go to you go to jail for something stupid? Mm. Now, that cost. What happens if I'm here in the street, I'm drinking and driving and I and I wreck my car or get in an accident? Yeah, I got life insurance and all that, but guess what? What happens when my daughter don't grow up without her daddy? What happens to my daughter mama when she don't got the person to what happens to my mama? What happens to the 13 people? What happens to the brand that I'm building? What happens to the people that I'm impacting? The cost. The cost of no discipline is destruction. Yo, you know what's crazy? I had a question on here and I was going to ask you, but I think we just unpacked the answer to it. Because even when it comes to like parenting, the scariest thing is that we can be the best parents we can, but our ch children still going to be whoever they want to be. Yeah. And I was going to ask you, like, since we talk about the price of everything, What's the cost of freedom? Mm -hmm. And I think we just unpack that without even knowing. I, in my opinion, I'm gonna ask you the question, mm -hmm. but I think the cost of freedom is discipline. One hundred percent. That's the freedom. Freedom is the dividend of discipline. Mm. Freedom is the dividend of discipline. Because watch this. Discipline is saying you can kill a man, but I'm not. But I'm not. And then what does that blossom into? That man might save my life one day. Mm. Man might save my life one day. Right? Um, freedom, freedom is having the ability to experience different things in life. And then those experience, I'll never forget this, bro. Watch this. I was in Africa. I did 30 days in Africa. And I remember seeing this old dude sitting on his stump. I was in Tanzania. And I, and I went over there and just talked to him because... I just, something just drung me to him. So I went over and I was talking to him and I said, man, you know, where you from? And he was like, he was from the other side. And I was, he was telling me he had a wife and the kids and all that. And I said, um, well, well, how long is it gonna take you to get there? And I was about to give him the money to get there. Cause it wasn't that much. He was like, nah, 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 nah. I'm gonna travel and I'm gonna get back there. But you will learn more from traveling than you ever reading a book. Hmm. He said, because every time you travel, and you experience the destination, you learn something new. Mm. And that was profound for me because I was like, wait, what? So now when I travel, I always try to not take as many pictures for Instagram. I try to be in the moment because when I'm in the moment, you learn something. Mm. You get some type of clarity. You get some type of epiphany, some type of, mm, damn, that makes sense to me. And so for me, freedom is being able to live life on your terms, but still in the parameters of the of what you set in place for yourself. So when I go somewhere, I ain't trying to go ball out and I want to experience it. I want to live it. I want to enjoy it. I want to take a piece of that place with me when I come back home mm. so I can always live there. And that's what helps me even when I'm at home. Sometimes, bro, I still suffer with survivor's remorse, bro. That shit is on my heart heavy. But what happens is I think about, damn, what happened when I jumped out that airplane in Dubai, bro? Damn, that shit was dope. I look at the video, it take me to another place, bro. It give me, all right, yep, I want to do this again. Damn, I felt good. I remember being in prison, reading about Kemet, reading about Egypt. But damn, I remember going there and walking through the pyramids of Gaza. I remember going there, climbing up and down, like, damn. I remember how hot it was. All right, that. I know what it felt like being in Africa for 30 days. I felt like Malcolm X. God dang it. Mm. Okay, that's... Mm. So I messed this up. That's It cost me that. All right, I love freedom. I don't, money is a byproduct of your consistency of having big dreams or playing a wealth game at a high level. The freedom is the dividends from it. Yo, hold up. I've never done this before. <clears throat> how, how long we got? 
37 minutes? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. That's good. 37 minutes. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, no, yeah. Uh, no, that's good. That's fine. All right, cool. Just let me know, because if we have to, we're going to switch the hard drive. But yeah, like I know, like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like. <laughs> Are you flowing, bro? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's love, man. <clears throat> So we, if we understand money is a byproduct of all these things, right? Yep. Why so many people don't muster up the courage to have the discipline to do the things most people won't do so they can get the money and they can have a little bit of freedom? Like, I'm pretty sure... What's that name? Harriet Tubman, what they said? If, if um, Harriet Tubman would have freed so many more slaves if they, if they knew they were mm -hmm. slaves, right? I'm pretty sure you teaching about stocks mm -hmm. and about just creating economic freedom. Mm -hmm. And your platform is it's good. Mm -hmm. But imagine if so many the people that who saw you and didn't pass by just wanted to listen. It would be so it would be so much more. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering why why are so many people overlooking this and, and not seeing the, the value in it? Freedom look different to everybody. Everybody freedom look the same. Mm. It said that a man on a dying bed got one wish, but a man that's healthy got a million wishes, or a mm. thousand wishes. Mm. Freedom looks different to everybody. So for some people, freedom is, you know, having all my bills on auto pay. That's freedom. Somebody else's freedom is being able to travel the world, not worrying about bills. For some people, freedom is, I just want to retire right. Freedom look different to everybody. And we got to give people what their version of freedom is and honor that. Mm. So for me, the, on my platform, you'll never see me talk about millions of dollars. You'll always see me talk about freedom. What's your freedom price? Mm. Because what happens is we start to project our vision and our goals on everybody else and then what happens is when people fail at life, they not fit a lot of times. It's not because they're failing at their own goals. They're failing at trying to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. So you've adapted J goals. You've adapted trap goals. You've adapted this man goals. You've adapted the Migos goals. You've adapted the goals that Floyd Mayweather got all his money and all these women. That's your freedom. Nah, that's your goal. But that ain't your real goal. You just adapted that goal because you have yet to sit down and say, what does freedom look like to me? Mm. Right, that's the thing about Instagram and social media. Our brain gets bombarded with so many visuals. It gets bombarded with so much stuff. And the more we download all this content, we get further and further away from who we really are. Mm. We get further and further away from our own thought processes. We get further and further away from our true emotional state. We get further and further away from what God really is. We get further and further away of what love really is. So we start looking at people and saying, that's my couple goals. When you don't know that man, he might be beating the piss out of her mm -hmm. off the camera. She, they may be good actors. What happens is the more we download the content, and I was re, I would listen to this thing called a social dilemma, and it says that the way Instagram and these social media platforms is designed is to make you change a little bit every day. <laughs> so you a little bit every day. So if you go look at the average person, I told my team, I said, I need y'all to judge me. They was like, for what? I said. My screen time is at 17 hours a day. I need to get that down. They was like, well, we, I said, I'm about to just start. Now I know what I'll do. I'll trick myself into doing this. I'm doing market research. Mm -hmm. I'm studying the platform. I'm studying the content. Man, get your ass off that shit. Get off of it. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been doing. Getting my screen time down. All right, Trap, you got 700 books. Do market research right there. Trap, you got 200 audio books on your phone. Do market research right there. Get off that goddamn phone. Mm. You got 17 hours on one phone. You got three hours on one phone. That's 20 hours. What we doing, bro? Mm. You feel me? And so when you start to be like, man, I don't really know who I am because you done took, you followed 200 people. You listening to this. You done took in everybody else's content. You getting further and further away from your thoughts, your goals, your ideas. Mm. 
Your identity. You get further, and the further you get away from that, now you got people. You wonder why everybody dressed the same. You wonder why everybody looked the same. You wonder why everybody having the same conversation because everybody downloading the same content and everybody looking for praise from everybody who looked like them, sound like them, talk like them. But yet we all think we got freedom of speech. Mm. We all think we individuals, but yet we only replicating certain things. So how do you break away from that? That's why when you see certain people, you be like, ooh, it's something different about that person. I can promise you they read. So that's what I, like, I read a lot, bro. I read, I disconnect. I'll get on the gram, I'll even YouTube, I'll get on there, I'll put my content up, I engage with my people, it's off. Audible book. Read my book. That's, you start to find your voice. You get to find your perspective. You get to find your ideas. You get to tap into that. But if not, what happens is the minute somebody disagrees with you, guess what you feel like you got to do? I got to, I got, uh-uh. Let me, let me, let me handle this comment. You can have a thousand positive comments that mm -hmm. one negative comment in there, you about to address that. Mm -hmm. Bro, why are we addressing this? Why? So the further we get away from ourselves, just to get back to that, um, again, it goes back to one, environment and standards. And two, it goes to how far are you from your identity? Mm. How far is a person from their voice? Think about when we look at the movie Get Out, right? And when dude was in that proverbial sunken place, right? Think about Instagram, think about social media, think about these platforms as he was still able to operate in the body, but mentally and spiritually, it wasn't him. Mm -mm. Somebody else was controlling him. Man, just think about how many people walk around here just like that. The minute they get up, they hit that phone. That's the equivalent to that. Bink. As soon as they get up, wake up. They don't wake up. Thank you, God. <sighs> this first breath of fresh air, I wasn't promised this, but you gave it to me. You saw something in me that felt like I deserve this breath, this breath of fresh air. I'm going to just take five minutes to be thankful for that. You know, we don't do that. We take that for granted. Guess what we do? I don't. Aha. <laughs> Damn, I'm late for work. Shit, let me get up, go brush my teeth right quick. Right? That's the, <clears throat> you went to it. You here. And the further you get into it, the further you, the problem is, you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. and here's what I can bet you. I can guarantee you this. If we put 10 people in the room, eight of them at least tell themselves once a week, man, I'm going to get off this thing so much. Man, I'm going to stop spending so much time on that thing. Man, I need to be doing some other stuff. I keep procrastinating. You procrastinate. Yep, you are procrastinating, but you spend three hours on that phone. You're in a, you're in a sunken place. You don't lost your voice. You don't lost your vision. You don't lost your identity. And you basing, you're basing the things that you reward yourself with based on who's giving you accolades in the comments. Mm -hmm. So if the post don't get enough likes, you hide the likes. Man, I don't care. That thing would be 30. Like, I got a million, three, million three people following me. Bro, you could go, you could see some get 3,000, 5,000, 10,000. Some got 100. Guess what? I don't care. I don't care. Right? So the further we get away from who we are, the further we lose our voice, and people ain't going to agree with it. But what happens is denial is a way of saying, like, there's somebody in my front porch. And most people say, I'm an alcoholic, but I'm a functioning alcoholic. No, you're an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. You're not, not going to dress it up. You're an alcoholic, and you need to stop, right? Because what I've learned about alcohol is, unlike crack, unlike coke, unlike heroin, a person who's been drinking alcohol for so long, if you take them off alcohol, it'll kill them. Mm. It'll kill them. A person who's been on alcohol for so long, you can't even just take them off alcohol. You got to ease them off it. Because it'll kill them. It'll have messed up the chemical imbalance in their body. Bro, this shit done messed up people's chemical imbalance, man. And so we so far away from ourselves, bro. We, don't, we looking for people to validate how we think, how we talk, how we speak. And when we don't get somebody to validate that, the minute somebody go against that, bro, we won't nut up on them on that. Again, let's go back to what we talked about earlier. We don't give each other grace for nothing. We don't, we don't care to understand each other. I sit here listening to another black man, bro. I'm not listening to you just to out talk on your podcast. I'm going to take in your question. Mm. I'm going to put it in my head and so I can give you the best possible answer I can give you. No, man, this is great. I, 
this is amazing, bro. Like you just never know. Like you just never know. You know what I'm saying? Like because a part of me wants to say you never know what a person is going through, but you just never know. Like who a person is until you're really able to sit down and just talk to them. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times <clears throat> we we get lost in our identity. Speaking of identity of our work, because we as men, that's what we do. Like yep. you are what you do to so many people 100%. until you get to somebody to to somebody else successful and they like, man, I'm on the same shit. What about yeah. this? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like that's why I say that's why I love these conversations because nah, yeah. I could talk to you about stocks. And yeah. all that, because I, I again, I, I don't know too much, and right. I can learn a lot. And yeah. I know my, my people can learn a lot, but it's just something was about just like who you are. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Man, these conversations <laughs> are amazing, man. I love everybody in this space. Mm. Um, I think I think every last one of you all, include us, like, we are such, this conversation is needed mm -hmm. for somebody. I feel like we having a dope conversation in here. Thanks. Oh, um, you know what I'm saying? And what happens is, most people aren't great at being conversationalists. I feel like you're asking great questions that allow me to just go deep. And then what, what I will say, you're great at, and I can tell you've been, you've been looking at David Shands and a lot of other people, you'll ask a question and then you let the person go into it and you find out, okay, this is the time. Either I can pivot to this question, ask another question. Most people don't understand how to have a conversation. So you're doing a great job at that, bro. And Appreciate I always tell Shans, I be like, bro, you like Oprah, my dog. Yeah. You know, so I always tell him that. Um, but we're in a time that's so amazing is because we talked about this earlier. Like, imagine if like the the leaders before us had these type of platforms, mm. right? What I love about is because every interview or every show I go on there's always another level of me that's peeled back because between every show, I've probably done read another book that helped me identify a little bit more of who I am. It helped me go a little bit deeper on the concept. I, I have great conversations with great people all the time. Nobody can't really call me on some BS because I don't want to talk about that. Right? So I'm always growing and I love these platforms and I love what we're doing right now because Chad told me something that was real dope and, I don't, and I'm, I'm going to get this to you. Um, don't call yourself an influencer. Mm -hmm. You are a media company that produces content. Don't never let nobody pay you like an influencer. Mm -hmm. Make sure they pay you like a media outlet. Because that's what you're doing right here, bro. Mm -hmm. You're shooting media. Treat it like that. Don't never let them treat you like you're an influencer. Don't never let them treat you like you are just a content creator. You're a media outlet and you produce top tier media. And when you look at yourself like that, you walk into the room like that, and you go in every room knowing the value that you bring to that room. Nobody else don't bring this value, I bring it, and you're gonna pay me for it. And you giving your audience that type of value. That's why they tune in every week to you. Yeah, I, it's crazy, because I think y'all talk about this too. You want um, 19 Keys. Just the importance of confidence, but how the world try to take it away. Oh. It's like you can't be confident in today's age for some reason. Listen to me, bro. A confident black man with education, knowledge, some money. That's a scary motherfucker right there. Bro, you dangerous. Mm -hmm. You dangerous. You dangerous, especially if you ain't want to be a part of their clout game. Mm. <laughs> you dangerous especially if you want to be a part of the clout game dog man you can't never bro I come from nothing I don't want to be a part of nobody I'm building this bro and you got to be around people and I and I would get this dude his props for this Um, his name Hood Estates and early on in my journey he was such an amazing figure for me I did uh not going to say no names, but I did a webinar and a uh, training with somebody beginning of the pandemic. And I went in with integrity. And we did it. We knocked it out of the park. We killed it. And the person came back to me and was like, yo, let's do it again. And I was like, nah, I'm good. Not long after that, their name went trash. Mm. 
Mm. And it went trash for a long time. And I remember my partner, Pocky, told me, as long as you never chase clout and you keep God first, your brand will always be top tier. Always. Always. Because you don't never got to belong. You are where you're supposed to be. And, bro, I go through I go through this thing like that. Everybody got, if you, bro, I don't ever be saying trap, bro. Man, bro, I'm, I I bought me a house. Shit is 10,000 square feet, bro. I sit in that shit and I be like, nigga, you done came a long way, nigga. I enjoy it, bro. I watch my daughter run around. I sit in the movie room and chill. I don't got to be outside. Because an OG told me this. After 1230 at night, you looking for trouble. Mm. And it's going to find you. Bro, I'm not going. I be on that type of time. It's funny as you say that because that's the same thing I be telling my team that, like that's where I, one of my areas I lack because I don't really be in like the in crowd or like, nah, bro. you know what I'm saying? Like I just, I ain't gonna lie, part of me be wanting to because it's like, bro, I want, a lot of these places are, people are invited because they are somebody. Yeah. But it's like, at the end of the day, bro, and listen. Network responsibly. That's my thing to you. Network responsibly. I don't got to go everywhere. If I go everywhere, I water my brand down. Mm -hmm. But if I'm selective and the people who I rock with, so the people who I rock with, we in a group text together, they be like, man, Trap ain't about to come. I be like, I'm glad you know. <laughs> Facts. There's no cap. But if they hit me, be like, Trap, I need you to be here because they understand my personality. Right. I don't, I don't like being around all the time. I like being in my space. And it's not that I'm running from the world or nothing. But I've been in so much chaos in my whole life, bro. I just be like in peace. Mm. I like watching my daughter run around the house, bro. Yo, we got a backyard. We got a front yard. I got a pool. I got a jacuzzi. I got a theater room. Bro, I love watching my daughter just run around there. I moved her mama, you know, not far from me. Man, that's, I like that shit, bro. Mm. And also in that space, I get to read and just pray and be, I'm, I'm a praying dude, bro. I'm always thankful. Bro, I ain't on, bro, in 2018, I slept on the air mattress. Mm. Bro, I'm always thankful. And that's the one thing I think you forgot to add before this when you was like, um, I forgot exactly what you said, but I was going to add, I was going to add to your point. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Gratitude. Like that, that right there will take you a long way. Like when you were saying like, um, <clears throat> you just, uh, you don't chase the clout and you um, put God first. Yep. But also I would add gratitude because gratitude. a lot of times I be telling my team, man, I like not going to wood, but I'm going to put the work in. I say that, what I was going to say is it's crazy because, bro, where I came from, I might not get the biggest interview. But yep. if it stops today, come on, man. Yep. This, I'm a legend no matter if you accept it or not. You because this, this shit, bro. I came from nothing, like real, like real nah, live, nothing. You're, you're so how can hitting. we not? So how, like, be bro, if it stopped today, I made history, bro. If hitting. it stopped today, I'm grateful for just what I had. Thank you. Hitting. You get what I'm trying to say? You be hitting. And I feel like that is what a lot of people overlook because we, again, I, and I understand, right? I understand I'm, I'm grateful, but I, but at the same time, I don't because it's like, yo, we're chasing, we're, we're, we're climbing this ladder to success. And yeah, we want, we want the biggest of the biggest. Mm -hmm. But you can't ignore where you at, bro. You can't. Because five years ago, it's three years ago, it's a fact. it was not even close to this. I it's was begging fact. to have an answer from the niggas that I'm interviewing. This is a fact. So who are you to not look at it, my bad, to look you at it and be like, yo, thank God. Come this on, bro. Like we, It's like we study chasing. We overlook where we are. Like, this nah, fuck that. I ain't, I'm not overlooking none of this. Nah, you none gotta, of it. You got to appreciate the appreciation from where you are helps you fuel where you going. No, nah, we about to finish. Where is it? How, how long? All right, come on. We about to finish. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Um, the appreciation for where you at fuels where you going. Mm. So I go in every room I go in appreciative but also knowing who I am. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for being here but you ain't going to downplay me while I'm here. You feel me? I'm grateful for him, but I know who I am. 
in this room. Go cap. You feel me? And so I'm I'm I always look at that. When I go through all the ships, when I go through stuff, I mean, like, you was on the air match in 2018. This shit is beautiful. And the problem I'm going through ain't shit. What are we talking about? Nigga, I was yeah, homeless. Man. What are we talking about? <laughs> this shit ain't nothing. A nigga won't answer the phone? Fuck it. Yeah, what are we talking about? And I appreciate that. I, 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 again, I, I look at my phone right now, and I'm like, yo, I got I got Eric Thomas on Steve. What are we doing? <laughs> Come on, what are we talking about? Facts. Like, I got E.T. I got Charlemagne on my line. I got Steve Harvey right hand man on my line. Mm -hmm. What are we doing? I got Rose on my line. Yeah, I got D1 on my line. That's my dog. I love him. What we what? He's there. Uh, I go on the phone, I got two billionaires and like five, six, seven, eight regular, you know, millionaires. 10, 20 million ass. Bro, like, I ain't tripping. I'm here. And these good relationships. Mm, mm, mm. Plus, I still got the homies from the hood who, I, that's real rock solid. Like, I got a good thing here. I'm appreciating it. I got levels. I'm still I'm still here to never forget. I'm here to understand why I'm at. I got these people to know where we going as big picture thinkers. Bro, I'm good here. Yo, it's so hey. I appreciate it. I appreciate you pulling up. Yo, we didn't talk the storage off the hard drive and the damn audio. <laughs> Yo, we got this. This shit is great because I, I got another hour. Yeah. I mean, we, we, gotta, come on, we gotta do a part two, bro. I appreciate For you sure. pulling up. For sure. Like, this is really like, this was really good. Like, like yeah. this could do one view and I'll be great. Yeah. Nah, it, 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 it was just, it, it was, thank you, man. It, it fulfilled the soul. I hope. It, um, it did the same for the uh, the, the viewers. Yeah, man. Um, bro, I, I appreciate you. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yeah. you, man. I appreciate you on the team, man. Thank Already, you, man. man. Yo, Wall Street, Wall Street Trapper, Mr. J Hill, J Hill Podcast. Y'all know how to follow him. Y'all, I don't even. Yes, you yes, don't got it. I mean, I guess if you Link, want. Uh, on Instagram, you know, it's Wall underscore Street underscore Trapper. But love everybody to check out the live show we do every Tuesday on the Wall Street Look Like Us Not Network on YouTube. It's called Trapping Tuesday, helping you build your confidence in the market and helping you build legacy, man. So we trapping, man. Wall Street Look Like Us Now. I appreciate you again, brother. Yes, sir, man. J Hill, this is the J Hill Podcast. It's a wrap. We out. Thank you, brother. Ah, <laughs> man, that shit was good, man. <laughs>